such an honor to simply acknowledge the greatness of our God. It is an honor to be able to stand. It is an honor to be able to kneel. It is an honor to be able to humble ourselves before Him. Because truly there is no God like our God. And the reason why we say our God is because we have embraced Him. We have acknowledged Him. And therefore He becomes ours. Not that we own Him. But that we acknowledge that we are owned by Him. I had the privilege this year of... And really, this, this whole 50th has been an exciting adventure for me. Everything from people saying, oh, 50, it's going to be a great year. And I believe it's going to be a great year. I'm holding on to God's word that Brother Telly preached last week. says the latter is going to be better than the former. Yes. Didn't say it'd be faster. <laughs> said it'd be better. And I'm believing that what God has in store for me and for us is, is really so much greater than we could ever imagine. I started the week last week by preparing for Bible studies and I thought, man, I, I really do have a blessed life. I get to study God's Word and visit with people who want to know about God's Word. And, and people who don't want to know God, about God don't come to church, so I don't have to worry about all that kind of stuff. But it's an amazing adventure to walk with the Lord. I have been embracing several new opportunities. We are now known at one church in Idaho Falls as Cornerstone Baptist Praise Team. A couple from Nigeria wanted to have a special service for their 50th. They're both turning 50. And so for their service, they wanted to have praise and worship. And if you haven't seen worship in other cultures, you are so sheltered. <laughs> you need to get out. <laughs> you need to realize that the... the, the Things that we have grown accustomed to, other people are like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm not saying they're all right and we're all wrong. I'm just saying that there's, there's a lot of culture and encouragement that can be found. Matter of fact, after I spent some time getting ready for this service, I realized heaven is not going to be quiet at all. <laughs> You read the book of Revelations, you will see they will, God has given you 30 minutes of silence and that's it. It's in there, really, it's in there. If you haven't read it, you need to. There is 30 minutes in heaven where it is total silence. And that's for all the people who were raised in church that you couldn't sing, you couldn't talk, you couldn't say anything. God says, I'll give you 30 minutes, but then we're going to get it going. So we're just practicing for eternity. That's why we sing a little longer around here. That's why we stand. That's why we raise our hands. But as I was preparing for this, it really did. I realized God has blessed. And it's because of God's blessing. As the word says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And at 50 now, I am not going to make apologies I'm going to begin to walk in what God has allowed me to experience. So when they knocked and they said, can you bring your praise team over? I says, we'll be there. Anybody that's going to have church on their birthday should be given gold stars. Everybody comes for cake and ice cream. They had a great service. We had a great time. We sang some Nigerian songs. You're going to get a chance. I, I got them on tap. We'll, we'll bring them. Because when we get to heaven, you know what? Every language, every tongue is going to be represented. And when we get there, when they start singing, Imela, Imela, I want you to say, oh, we learned that word. That's thank you. We 
And when they start singing, gracias, gracias, you'll know what they're saying. When they start singing, cabio, OCO, Cornerstone will be, can we sing with you? That's what I've learned in 50 years. God is bigger than your box. And he is bigger than my box. And you know what? If we can be a blessing to the kingdom of God and to the saints of God, and we're Cornerstone Baptist praise team, to God be the glory. Amen? John 10. Turn with me if you would. Let me share the words of Jesus. My words are just words, although I now have 50 years behind them. Your words, they're just words. But the words of Jesus are eternal. They are life, they are correction. And may God minister his word to us today. John chapter 10, starting in verse 1, I'm reading from the New King James Version. And the desires today simply share with you words of life. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up over some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens And the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Wonderful words of life, but they didn't get it. Direction, instruction, protection, all the things that we long for. People will spend literally thousands of dollars for home security systems only to be robbed. Such a blessing last week to have my my best friend over the years. We met in Bible school. He flew out to be with me on my 50th birthday. His is in December. I may be gone. But the reality of this home security was reinforced when he told the story of his his sister and brother, sister-in-law and brother. And they had been robbed So they got a security system. Everything was like it should be. His sister-in-law walks into the home, instantly realizes, you women know what what I'm talking about. You have this instinct that says, something's not right here. And as she began to walk through the house and walked into the doorway of her bedroom, here's somebody waddling through, peddling through her jewels runs out, knocks her over. Security systems of this world will fail. Jesus said years ago, he who comes in over the wall or through the window is a robber and a thief. He was simply telling them something they already knew, but what they didn't understand is there's a house in which a thief longs to get into. A liar longs to trespass on. Peter understood it. You know, Peter was there when he told this story and he got the inside track and he tells us in 1 Peter, he says, the devil's like a lion, roaring lion, seeking, roaming around, seeking whom he may devour. In other words, he's looking for opportunities. Thieves don't need a door. They'll use a window. Thieves don't need a doorbell because they don't want to be discovered. And so the thief today in this particular story is not just any 
individual. However, there are people who will rob you. My mother told me years ago, there are some people who will take your money, they'll steal your money. There are other people who will steal your time. Both are precious. Spend them wisely. The reality of our lives is the fact that you are a temple. Your body is a temple. The truth is you are fearfully and wonderfully made and there is no other temple just like you. Out of all the billions of people there are, there is nobody just like Stella. Out of all the people there are, there is nobody with your story. You will stand before God and tell your story because it's not like everybody else's story. And He will ask you how you took care of your house. God spoke through Paul and said to the Corinthians, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Lord? And if we can agree today that this truly is my house, then we've also got to realize that there's opportunities for the enemy to come in. And we've got to be careful. I love the song I learned years and years and years ago as a child. It says, oh, be careful little eyes what you see. Oh, be careful little ears what you hear. Why? Why? Because those are windows. Those are entrances into my soul. And there are thieves out there who want to get in and rob and steal my innocence. They want to rob and steal my, challenge, or my, my faith. They want to rob and steal my love and my joy. Matter of fact, much has been said over the years about joy suckers. Anybody ever encountered joy sucker? <laughs> was at a birthday recently and somebody was talking about cooking carp. Some of you are like, yeah, carp, that's nasty fish. But there are some places where they know how to cook it, and it's, it's great. But those kind of fish are known to be suckers. They just kind of waddle around in the water, swim around in the water. They, whatever's left behind, they, there are people, though, who would love to rob you of your joy, rob you of your love, rob you of your peace, rob you of your faith. And so we must be sober. We must be vigilant. And as a result, Jesus is sharing, you realize that as a sheep, you are vulnerable, and you've got to realize that there is opportunities to get in. Let's be careful who we let in. As Jesus continues to talk here, he begins to share that there is somebody else who comes in and Unlike the thief, the thief doesn't have license to come. He doesn't have rights to come in. But there's somebody else that has the right to come in. It says, when the shepherd comes, the doorkeeper opens. The shepherd, in this sense, is obviously talking about somebody who is over the sheep, who is responsible for the sheep. Jesus would go on later, and we may get to it today, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we will. The good shepherd. But he says the shepherd comes in and because the shepherd has the right, the door is made open. As a result, the shepherd goes in and the shepherd comes out. The shepherd leads the sheep out and he leads them, not beats them, but leads them. Thomas told a story many times as his trips over to Israel when he watched this very real picture, this illustration of a shepherd who would simply walk ahead of the sheep. And because, as Jesus said, the sheep know the shepherd's voice, they will follow. There could be another herd going on this side, and there could be something else going here. But those sheep, listen for that voice. Words of life. Words of hope. Words of protection. And they didn't understand it. Will you be one of those who will listen to the reading of God's Word and walk away and say, I don't get it. I hope not. Jesus talks in a way that children can understand, but the intelligent missed it. It can make pure, simple sense that, hey, if a bad guy comes, keep him out. If a good guy comes, if the right guy comes, let him in. Isn't that what you're going to teach Stella when she grows up? Be careful for the strangers. Daddy, how come we don't go there? 
That's a strange place, Della. As we walk this Christian life out, my prayer is that you will have that kind of relationship with God, that as you walk through the streets in your city, as you walk through the job, the hall, the school, wherever it may be, that you will have such a keen understanding of the Lord's voice that if He were to tell you to go left, you'd go left and wouldn't ask. If He challenged you to stop, you'd just stop. Parents, you know how frustrating it is when you see what's coming, your little kid doesn't, you tell them to stop and they look at you, what? I'm supposed to stop? Reminds me of a story years ago of a man who took his son to the jungles of Brazil. And as they were walking through the jungles, the little boy happened to notice this flower and he noticed this thing and it was really cool and as he began to get distracted, he slowed down and the group, he began to get separated from the group and as they got apart, pretty soon the father realized, hey, little boy's not around. He turned around, he was only about 50 yards away, but he was close enough to be able to see that things weren't right. He said, son, stop. The boy stopped. He said, now son, slowly, very slowly, get down on your knees Then get flat on your belly, but do it slowly. The son got down on his knees really slow, laid down on his belly, said, now slowly crawl. And as he was crawling away, dad was encouraging him, you're doing good, you're doing, just keep crawling. Okay, now you can get up. He got up, the dad and the son embraced Dad turned his son around, and there hanging from the tree over top of them was one of those huge snakes that could have just wrapped around, picked him up, and been lunch. My sheep know my voice. Verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus finally comes out and just says in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. And here's how you can identify the good shepherd from all of the other wannabes. Can you read it out loud with me? The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Today, it's no new story. But it's the story we need to be reminded of. The good shepherd didn't just talk a good line. The good shepherd didn't just do a bunch of miracles. The real shepherd was the one who said, I'll lay down my life. Last week we had a missionary from India with us. And he made the comment about the Hindu religion having 300 plus million gods. They've got statues and all kinds of things. Now I I don't know about you, but I'm realizing that That's a lot of deities. Matter of fact, it's more than I can keep track of. Imagine, if you will, men, having 300 million wives that you had to keep happy. And if you can can imagine that, if you can imagine that, you can only... Imagine the weight and the stress and the challenge to an individual who truly, truly has committed themselves to believing that there are 300 million gods. And if I make one of them mad, something's going to happen. And if something bad happens to me, I've got to figure out which god I made mad. 
I may not have the wisdom of Solomon, but I did one thing he didn't. I married one. (laughs) And by the grace of God, I will keep her happy for the rest of her life. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. You don't have to learn other voices. You don't have to learn other ways. You don't have to learn other truths. Later on in John chapter 14, he would say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And in John 10, he says, I'm the door. Do you get it? Do you understand that? There is no other way to eternal life but through Jesus Christ. It's just that simple. You either know Him or you don't. And to know Jesus is to know truth. To know Jesus is to know there's a way to walk. There's a way to live. There's a way to think. There's a way to to, to act out our lives. Matter of fact, some people have said over the years... They don't like Christianity because it's all those don'ts. Well, let me tell you one don't that has convinced me I'm staying right where I'm at, sheltered in the arms of Jesus Christ. And it's this. Don't fret about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you're going to wear or what you're going to eat. Those are some don'ts that keep me right where I'm at in the hands of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Keeps me in the flock of the good shepherd. Keeps me working on making sure I know his voice. Now for those of you who may be wondering, how in the world am I going to know his voice? It sounds a lot like King James. It does not. (laughs) Jesus does not speak King James. By the way, that's Shakespearean language if you really want to know the truth. Jesus speaks in such a way that you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt. If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal bodies. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, and for some of you today, Jesus is still a stranger. If you are here today, and you find yourself wandering without a shepherd, come to Jesus. If you are here today, and you have found yourself listening to a lot of voices, and you're not sure. Hey, the Bible tells us that a double-minded man is unstable. Jesus said you can't be two-faced in this life. You can't love God and money. You've got to make your mind up. And my challenge to you today is let all those things fly away. Let them, let them become what they're going to become. But make a determination that for you, He is God alone. And then commit your life to making sure that you are reading and listening. And when you say, Lord, is that you? Let me tell you one thing I've done over the years. Lord, is that you talking? It'll usually be found confirmed in here. Is that you coming? Is that you, Lord? Is that you? Are you telling me to stop? There's a reason, there's truth. And in the sweet by and by, it's all going to make sense. But for now, I'm trusting in Jesus. And let me tell you, it will be worth it. All the scars I don't have because I trusted Jesus. All the wounds I never had to heal from because I trusted Jesus. All the stories that I don't have to remember because I trusted Jesus. And all the glorious peace, joy, comfort, hope, healing that are mine to declare to to eternity how great is our God. The Good Shepherd. Jesus goes on to share, and I would challenge you, read the rest of it. If you don't have a Bible, there's a Bible right in front of you underneath there. Take it. 
You're not stealing. Take it. Find John chapter 10. Read it. And let Jesus become your good shepherd. I realize today there may be individuals here who have trusted the Lord a long time ago. Last week when Brother Telly was talking, he said, you know, Pastor Mike, he's, he's different. Now, I've been called different. <laughs> Anybody that uses wire to fix your glasses, they're a little different. Some of you thought I was just trying to be fashion, right? No. My glasses broke. And I fixed them. <laughs> I'm okay with being different at 50. I'm okay with being submitted to Jesus. I'm okay. And I don't know if you are, but I trust you are. Today, if you are committed to Jesus and you've committed your life for a long time, I want to, I want to just challenge you. Keep the faith. In times like this, we need a Savior. And if you know that Savior, let your light shine. Don't waver. Regardless of what other denominations or regardless of what other governments or regardless of what your neighbors are embracing as relative. There are some relatives I could live a lifetime and never meet. And I'm not acu- I don't want to be accused of being old-fashioned just because I'm 50. But I'm going to tell you this. Truth doesn't change. And the same truth that protected Christians through the years is the same truth that will keep me. So to those of you who know Him, keep running the race. Keep fighting the fight. Don't waver. For those of you that church is a weekend hobby, wake up. Repent. You are wasting the days of your life. You are listening to things that don't benefit anyone. You are watching things. You are consumed by things. You spend your time, your energy, your breath, your loyalties on things that cannot give you eternal joy. Weigh your decisions carefully. Because you will be held accountable for what you did with this gift of life. If you are here today and you have not trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says it over and over again, this is the day of salvation. Let it be. If you are here today and you are wondering, do I do this, do I not do this, consider this a divine appointment and God is saying, I'm knocking Do you know me well enough to say, this is the good shepherd, I'll let him in? Or are you going to say, whoa, not now. I got life to live. I just graduated from high school. I got to go live some things. I was there, Justin. The reality of your days is that they are precious and they are numbered. Spend them wisely.